Hello everybody, in this example we are going to evaluate the definite integral using the limit definition or that's also known as using the Riemann sum. The goal of this process is for you to bridge what you learned about Riemann sums with what you are learning with the fundamental theorem of calculus where you can easily calculate this integral. So in order to do, do this process your end goal is as you're doing the steps you want to get the summation of 1x or x squared so that you can finish using the summation rules of these to help you evaluate the definite integral. And so I want you to think back to like, how did you do the right hand rule or midpoint rule or left hand rule? And that's kind of gonna be the way that you guide this process here. So that means our very first step is that we need to calculate that delta x. But remember, it's gonna be delta x sub k, right? That, that was this unique process with this limit definition slash Riemann some way. But it's going to be the same calculation as you've done before. It's going to be b minus a all over n. That's by definition. So what is our b and what is our a? Well, that depends on your bounds over here, right? The integral goes from a to b, the definite integral. So that means our delta x sub k will be, for this problem, 4 minus 2 over n. And if you simplify that, we just get 2 over n. So that's our first step. Our second step would be to figure out what type of endpoints do we want to use, and we've already assigned that we want to use the right-hand endpoints. So using the right-hand endpoints means that the formula we'll be using will be the summation as k goes from 1 to n of f of a plus k times delta x times delta x. Okay, this is just something that you will remember and memorize uh, for you to use that, that right-hand rule. Okay, so that would be my step two is to, to try to figure out what is this part of the calculation. That's going to be the next thing that I need. So what is A plus K times delta X? This is my, my new X sub K actually. We'll call it X sub K. So this is going to be equal to, well, A is our starting value, so that's 2 plus K and our delta X. We just calculated that delta X, right? Delta X is going to be 2 over N. So you are more than welcome to leave it like that and proceed to the second or the next step, so step 3. So step 3 is for you to begin the Riemann sum process for your function. Okay, so we're going to have the summation from k equal to 1 of n, and then it's going to be f, f of 2 plus 2k over n times your delta x, and your delta x is another 2 over n. Okay, so all we did was this part right here. We just substituted that into the Riemann sum. We're going to substitute this into the f function, and our function is right here. So this is going to be equal to summation of k equal to 1 of n of 2 times 2 plus 2k over n plus 5. And then all of this is being multiplied by 2 over n. Okay, So this 2 over n, that's this 2 over n right here. So cleaning this up. You could distribute okay, and then combine like terms. So doing so, we get, see this is 4 plus 4k over n plus 5. And then all of that will be multiplied by 2 over n. And cleaning that up again, we get 9 plus 4k over n times 2 over n. So what I would do from here is recognize that 2 over n is a constant. So I would probably bring that out to the front. So I would start off with 2 over n being pulled out to the front. And then I have two terms here, one with a constant 9, and then the other with a constant and the variable k. So I, again, can factor out any constant. So this is going to be not, well, if I, I split this up, slowly. This will be 9. And then 2 over n is factored out. And then this is going to be k equal to 1 to n of 4k over n. 
So like I said, the variable parts stay in front and then the constants come factored out. So this is going to be 18 over n, okay, equal to 1, n of 1, which is good because again, we wanted a summation of 1, k or k squared. So, so far that part's good. Factoring out 4 over n, this will give us 8 over n squared times the summation of k equal to 1 to n of k, which is good because again, we know the summation of k. So continuing to simplify this, we get 18 over n times, well, what is the summation of just a constant 1? That's just equal to n. And then we have 8 over n squared, and what is the summation of k? That's n times n plus 1 all over 2. Okay, and cleaning this up, we see that the n's cancel out. One of these n's here cancel out. Okay, and then rewriting this out, we get 18 plus 8 divided by 2, that's 4. So this is 4 uh, n plus 1 over n. And then this will give us, that's a sloppy 18, this will give us 4, right, n divided by n is just 1, and then we're going to have 4 divided by n as our last term. Okay, so then from here, we're now ready to proceed to step 2, step 4. So step 4 is going to be putting this whole process together of the definite integral to the Riemann sum and the limits. So the definite integral from 2 to 4 of 2x plus 5 with respect to x is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the result that you just got. So uh, 18 plus 4, that's 22 plus 4 over n. Okay, well using your limit definitions, if we, if we divide by a really large number, 4 divided by a really large number, that is going to approach 0, right? So that means that this limit is just equal to 22. And that would be your final answer. And what would be a quick way to double check that this was correct? Using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So what is the integral, the definite integral of 2x plus 5 with respect to x? Well, we to, to, to integrate this, we want to take the antiderivative of 2x. So that would be what? Well, we would raise it up a power, divide by the power. And then 5, well, raising that up a power would just be 5x. And then this is going to be evaluated from 2 to 4. And then continuing to simplify this, this is x squared plus 5x being evaluated from 2 to 4. And then this will be 4 squared plus 5 times 4 minus 2 squared plus 5 times 2. And then cleaning this up, we get 16 plus 20 minus 4 plus 10, 36 minus, well, 4 plus 10, that's 14. Ah, beautiful. 36 minus 14 gives us 22. And we have the correct answer.